So now, again, audience, I'm just going to have to ask you to keep up with me here. We cut to Bermuda, where a floating translucent tampon appears in the sky. It's like a spaceship, a tampon ship appears in the sky. Mm -hmm. And then we're at a dairy farm with lightning crashing all around us as a reptilian shapeshifter drinks the blood from a cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was that was a lot. (laughs) God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema because we got really weird test results from the ITBS. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath is <laughs> off for one more week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? The bear arises to take down the scorpion eagle at last, Noah. I mean, I'd ask you what that means, but like you just like (laughs) listener, just buckle in. Right. There's a lot of that today. And also joining us today, because I guess there's not much going on in the Alex Jones world at the moment, are Dan and Jordan from the Knowledge Fight podcast. Dan, Jordan, welcome back. Oh, that's us. Yeah. So excited to have you guys back. Always a delight to have you on, especially for this crazy shit. Yeah, it was intense. (laughs) (laughs) I. It's fun. As Dan and Jordan come on our show more and more to destroy a relationship we never had the luxury to form. <laughs> right? The first time they were on, was like, oh, it's good to see you. And this time they were like, hello. So are we recording yet? <laughs> and let me, and so, let me so, tell you something. Uh, go fuck yourself. This <laughs> is, that is a relationship that is a luxury item, okay? <laughs> a relationship with us is worth more than a regular relationship. And here you are. I would also suggest that there is a good possibility that this is the best way for us to become friends. Because it is kind of like uh, being in Trauma the, bonding? Yeah, yes, trauma yes. Bonding. Sharing <laughs> trauma. Yeah. We're yeah. in the trenches. Band of brothers. <laughs> Oh, I would so rather be murdered by a German guy yelling schlaft at me. But, you know, that's me. That's me. <laughs> All right. So tell us, Dan. What will we be breaking down today? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. It's something to do with Nostradamus, but mm-hmm. I don't really. I I don't know. We, we you tell me, man. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know what this was. <laughs> what do we have to deal with this? We have Dan stuttering to deal with in rage. That's what this movie I'm not, is. I'm not enraged. I'm confused. Yeah. Well, there's that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more like huh than mad. I think this is our, Eli, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is our fourth movie from the Happy Science Cult out of Japan. Mm -hmm. Yep, we've watched them all. The first three were cartoons. This one is live action, and it's um, at least as weird as the cartoons. So (laughs) I got that it was the cult. I understood that. I saw the title card. Yeah. But what what I don't understand is anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Past that. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> right. No. So this movie was like hanging out with a bunch of people who all work at the same place, but you don't work there and they won't shut up about work shit. Right. Yeah. You never have the blindest fucking clue what's going on. So word of warning to the audience. When I say shit like and then a panel of international female stereotypes glows their way into a giant chessboard, you need to just accept that and keep pushing forward. with it. <laughs> That did happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So in keeping with our format here, Jordan, I'll give you the honor of answering this one. How bad was this movie? Oh, boy. Um, Did you ever see the original animated version of Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. The rotoscoped version yep. where it had orcs, like, but it was just like your friend Sal who's wearing a helmet, like a Viking helmet. <laughs> and then... I remember the song vividly. I don't know if it was from this one or from a different animated version, but Frodo of the Nine Fingers. Okay. I think Leonard Nimoy may have covered it at some point. (laughs) Sure. Like, that's the level of this movie, and it's great. I contest the suggestion that this is even a movie. Yeah. That's a good point. That is a good point. We might have to litigate that at some point. What (laughs) is a movie? And we're getting good at litigation. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I bet. (laughs) Yeah, because movies generally have plots and characters and stakes and dialogue. Yeah, it's it, it, this just seems like the introduction of a bunch of huh? yeah, a yeah. bunch of like ooh, what well, about, about that? what about this? Huh? What, uh, do what do you think? Yeah. yeah, a lot of inside jokes that we don't get. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> does this do it for you? 
So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I think my best worst is going to have to be the weird Princess Leia hairstyles. Okay. Yes! Brought by some of the gods. I think those were held together by beads. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was uh, it was fascinating to see a bunch of uh, elderly Japanese men wearing Princess Leia outfits. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. Wearing little little girl pigtails. Yeah. Yeah. It was a choice. I uh, liked it. I would go with the best worst use of presumably divine beings being obsessed with percentages. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they really had a fucking quota to fill here. Yeah. This movie was co written by Timothy Geithner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Most of this movie should be just angels using tech support. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> comes through and we uh, got to get that uh, number down. <laughs> So I, I was going to go with the best worst YouTube description. I'm just going to quote it here in its entirety. It's not that long. This is amazing. This movie was described as, quote, a spiritually awakening movie based on a prediction by Nostradamus that was diverted because of the teachings of the laws of the sun. You were born to encounter this truth. That actually is illuminating. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it, it, I, I kind of wish we had read that before we, <laughs> before we watched the movie. Neither of us read shit. Well, yeah, because the whole half the time I was thinking, like, Lost Dramas didn't say that. Lost Dramas didn't say any of this shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and none of it happened either. So what the hell is going on? It's all because it was diverted. Yes. Yeah. Damn God it. Goddamn son. I feel like <laughs> even the prophecy was diverted too, right? Like he was diverted yep. from making this. He was like, at the end, he was like, oh, never mind. The happy science cult has it. <laughs> the YouTube yeah. description is the key. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <whole thing>. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're going to write the skeleton key to this. Like, you know, they have one they have for Finnegan's Wake. Yeah. We're doing it for this movie. That's our, that's our project. Tune in next week. <laughs> they make the movie. They realize it makes no sense. And like, we'll uh, fix it in the YouTube hey, description. We'll call it, we'll call it Finnegan's <laughs> Wake, too. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. refinning. That's awesome. <laughs> and I was going to go with simply best worst saving the world. Look. I've watched a lot of animes where people hold hands and use the power of friendship to stop the big bad. I've never watched an anime, though this isn't an anime, where they all hold hand to stop the big bad and the world apparently ends anyway. And they're like, ah, that was my fuck. question. <laughs> well, that ended better. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. I was a little bit interested as to whether or not they won. And I feel like they didn't now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we'll we'll examine it in detail coming up. But right now we have a quick break to take, but we're back in a flash with all the visual gibberish that is the terrifying revelations of Nostradamus. Hey, podcast listener, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm No Illusions. You know, at this point in the show, we'd usually advertise our upcoming Christmas tag there in New York City on December 17th. I, I mean, after all, it's only the second week that tickets have been on sale. But it looks like we drastically underestimated how many of you want to watch us live. And so, as of this record, there are um no tickets left for that Not show. a single goddamn one. But don't worry. We have a lot more live shows planned for next year. We just locked in our show on the West Coast, and we're going to announce that soon. That's right, we are. And you can still see us at QED over in London. Also, in defense of whoever made the call on the theater side, we did book a theater double the size of the one we used in our last New York show. So, you know, feel like we should maybe cut that person a little slack. Yeah, so it just doesn't matter how much money we lost out on. All right. So, okay. So did, then did you rent a larger theater for the West Coast show? Yes. I'm going to assassinate you. That's fair. That is fair. Theaters are a good place to do that kind of thing, right? Right? Sick Samper Tyrannosaurus. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick, accomplished beardsman. You know, when you have a beard like mine, it's a lot of responsibility. That's true. A beard like Eli's requires the confidence to say, hey, when I walk into a room, people might think I'm a rabbi or homeless or both, but I don't care. Or both indeed. And with the white growing from the outside in, one needs the vim, vigor, and determination to look people in the eye and say, no, no, I wasn't cursed by a witch. This is just how my beard grows somehow. But for those not ready to carry such a heavy burden, there's Harry's. What's Harry's? With Harry's, you have everything you need for a great shave and nothing but that. Their blades are made in their own factory in Germany and hold up better than ever. 
Guys who have tried it say that their eighth shave is as sharp as their first, and their sleek, ergonomic weighted handles look great in your bathroom and give you precise control with each swipe. That's why I, No Illusions, personally endorse it as a product. I don't know, Noah. Fancy, high-quality razors? That must cost an arm and a leg. Not at all. Harry's starter set starts at $3. Plus, you'll get a free travel size body wash. The set includes a five-blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. A $16 value for just $3. Just visit harrys.com slash awful. All right, Noah, but... What about refills? Their refill blades are as low as $2 each and delivered right to your door, so you can stop spending money on razors that are overpriced by design. No matter how busy things get, stay fresh with Harry's. Get your Harry's starter set today, and you'll get a free travel size body wash as well. Just go to harrys.com slash awful. That's harrys.com slash awful. Harry's, because some people want to eat soup. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown. And in case you're wondering how long it's going to take this movie to get all the way weird, the very first thing the movie does is check in on the ninth dimension. Those are the first words. The ninth dimension. And the first words in my notes are, fuck yeah, happy science. Yes. <laughs> I legitimately do not remember there being a ninth dimension. <laughs> if that was at the beginning of the movie, there are several other dimensions mm -hmm. that overtook it. I think we were too confused because it also said like 1930. Yeah. Like <laughs> yep. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why there's time and the yeah. ninth dimension, but hey. Well, yeah, we start off on there's these little stars. They represent Jesus, Confucius, Isaac Newton, Zeus, etc. Like that's one of those SAT analogy questions. Like what? Who? Yeah. These are these are the highest spirits in the happy science cult. And they are one of these things doesn't belong <laughs> levels of batshit, right? They include Zeus, Zoroaster, Moses, and Confucius. And Isaac <laughs> Newton. Yeah. Uh -huh. Isaac yeah. Newton. In this set of repeating numbers, which god goes after Zeus? <laughs> <laughs> I was confused because I didn't see, like, Nostradamus wasn't on that list, right? I nope. mean, I was, no. I was thinking, like, isn't this a <laughs> Nostradamus a movie? Point. <laughs> no, Nostradamus will be side to this movie in a really like disheartening way. Right. Yeah, no, it's like Nostradamus was an afterthought. They were like, oh, you know what would be a great frame for this? The fucking bearded guy wandering around a dungeon. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? The movie was written by the Nostradamus scenario project. That's Nostradamus it. was going to yes. be central to this movie, no matter yes. what they believe. I, I Googled that, by the way. I can find no trace of the Nostradamus scenario no. project. I think they just made it up. Yeah. yeah, that feels like a one project production. <laughs> yes. I don't think they had a second meeting where they were like, all right, great. So we got the movie out of the way. Now let's begin the real work of the Nostradamus production. Company. Putting out classic albums. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. <laughs> we're the Nostradamus scenario project. It's ELO and uh -huh. NSP. Those are the two greatest. <laughs> Kenny Rogers in the first edition put their album out by the, with the, uh, <laughs> the Nostradamus scenario Huey project. Lewis in the scenario project. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jefferson Airplane was named the Nostradamus Scenario Project for a second. You gotta yeah, yeah, so. really pay attention to the deep cuts. <laughs> they, they had the best session guys. <laughs> so my first like failed Google came right. It, like when they started doing the quotes, right? So they have Nostradamus reading some Nostradamus prophecies, but they're made up. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's all bullshit. That's not a th real thing that Nostradamus ever said. So I'm Googling the fuck out of this where he's talking about it's it starts talking about all the countries by their representative animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's easy for a second right there. They're like the eagle from America is going to get its beak all fucked up. The bear will bleed. Right. Bears, <laughs> Russia. We've been there, man. We got you. Right. right. The, bear, the bear will be red with blood. Is like, oh, that's communism. Totes. All right. Fine. Yeah, whatever. We, we're we're in. It. Sure. And then they get to like, and then the scorpion, and we're like, who the fuck is the scorpion? What do you, what do you the hero of Europe is a, probably a, I don't know, a snake, maybe? Or the snake yeah, is the bad guy? <laughs> they definitely get, de they, they get desperate, and then you can tell they've gotten desperate because they go to mythical animals. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, guys, everyone knows what the fucking eagle looks like. We look like assholes. The Leviathan is Japan, okay? Because nobody, maybe it's a hippo, maybe it's a guy. It's fine. We're, we're just Leviathan's Japan. <laughs> Australia is a hippogriff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they, they move past the animal kingdom into Final Fantasy summons. Mm -hmm. That's the, yes. <laughs> Jigglypuff is Finland. 
<laughs> oh my god. Would it have been out of place if Jigglypuff had been a character? <laughs> no, so, not really. No. He could have put the darkness to sleep. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> all right, so then we so, but all of that prophecy fades away and we cut to Nostradamus walking through the fucking Sanctum Sanctorum or something. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. This will be, I just want to throw this out there, all that Nostradamus will do throughout the movie. He's just wandering around his seven bedroom apartment being like, God damn it, where the fuck is my phone? There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of shadow work going on yes. too. Yeah. Occasionally the shadow existed Peter Pan style without Nostradamus's well awareness. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the shadow eventually gets bored and starts doing space work. He or did something. a lot of space work. <laughs> there was one part too where the shadow was a cup going up to his head, but it didn't make sense like the way it looked. It yeah. really looked like somebody blowing another person. It totally did. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really did. did. I, I have that too. So, but he's got his little book, and for a while there, I thought I thought they couldn't afford words for those pages, right? Because he's just flipping through this empty book. But eventually, he'll start like thinking prophecies onto him mm-hmm. right the first one is the book kind of he, he flips through a couple empty pages and then there's an explosion and we see pictures of like i guess a war in india sure yeah i remember yeah. that one and then he turns the page and we see violence in africa as well so apparently nostradamus predicted that there would be violence somewhere on continents and subcontinents <laughs> at some point. It feels Nailed like it. all Nostradamus predicted was when shit would get violent. That was <laughs> that was mainly his job. Yeah. Or even that shit because he never like throws a year out there, right? Like he's no, just like no, no, shit's no. going to go down in India. Dude, watch <laughs> out. Just you wait and see. Most Africa's of- <laughs> got some bad shit going on eventually. <laughs> Most of Nostradamus's promises could boil down to like Dude, watch out for what's coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Shit's gonna get crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was I was watching this, and at this point, when Nostradamus was on, I was so bored that I developed a character, Roasterdamus. Yep, that uh, I'm very proud of. Yeah, oh, nice. Ooh. One of his uh, big jokes <laughs> is the sudden death of the leading man will cause change, making another man leader soon, but too late. The young man will attain high office by land and sea. He will be feared. Also, your mom sucks. <laughs> nice. Roaster Davis. Fuck yeah. I was, wonder- I was wondering when you wrote that. <laughs> He's already on a t-shirt. Do you, know what- <laughs> Do you know what's crazy about Roaster Davis? Dan predicted he would need that character 20 years ago. Oh, no <laughs> shit. He- that was in a notebook that was back from his high school years. That's how crazy that was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what's the deal with bagged milk is the joke right underneath. <laughs> so, but eventually we zoom in on World War One, or actually, I guess we skip over World War One, right? Because the subtitle comes up and says 1930 AD. I like, I like that they specify, right? Too many places don't specify whether we're talking about AD or BC. 1930 AD. That's based on... The Christian calendar, right? I mean, yeah, like, that's, the Gregorian yeah, calendar. that's strange that the ninth dimension and all of these beings would be. Yeah, everybody works on the same calendar. <laughs> a little weird. It just made, eventually, you just to make it easier, you know. If you summon Caesar to solve problems in Russia, you work off his fucking calendar, yo. We haven't gotten to that's that yet. That's fair, right? Yeah, they should at least use the Julian calendar for that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now I'm just picturing the interdimensional Slack channel where someone's like, hi, guys, I'm sorry. Do you mind putting time zone next to your day? No, Alan, we're doing <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. God. <laughs> hey, we'll put it at 1930 AD. 1930, Alan's a dick. That's what we're going to do. Roast your dollars. Roast your dollars. But yeah, so I love, so we zoom past some heaven columns to a heavenly gazebo where the council of glowy dudes are talking about all the human violence. I did like that gazebo. It was a nice gazebo. It, was a big it, was a nice gaze- it made me think we were watching an anime. I've been thinking about gazebos a bit lately and how much I like them. Yeah. So seeing one, actually, I got a charge out of that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> However, that does imply that occasionally it rains on the <laughs> nine higher beings <laughs> in the eighth oh, rain. Oh, guys, get under, get under. It's coming in sideways. <laughs> Listen, the temperature's nice, but the rain is a problem. How do we solve this? It also implies recreational games, probably. Yeah, you know, like right. Lawn yeah. darts or... Totally. Right. 
And you just know everybody expected Isaac Newton to do it. They were like, well, I don't know about you. I was the god of lightning. Does anyone here have any practical <laughs> engineering <laughs> experience? Maybe hasn't seen a pussy. Don't look. Zoraster's just like, don't look at me. Hey, man, I'm Zoraster. <laughs> Dude, you know what I do, and it is stab people. <laughs> This And this is an amazing moment because the, the thing about happy science is it's all based in history based on like placemat history, right? Like the guy who came up with it didn't really know much about history. So it's all like the guys that would show up in a, you know, in a Bugs Bunny cartoon of world history or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to me because I do feel like maybe I was in the same history classes as the starter of this cult. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recognize a lot of that history. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that, sh- that sounds like something I was told. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Archduke Franz Ferdinand was shot by Elmer Fudd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> No, I was folding the paper football while someone said that. I know yeah, what no, I, I recognize. Yeah. Nazi yeah. season. <laughs> Communist season. Nazi Very season. Very quiet. <laughs> We're hunting Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucked up cartoon. I don't know why they pulled yeah. it. It was, really, it, was one of, it was one of Elmer Fudd's bests, honestly. I like that he was played by Al Pacino, though. That was a brave choice. <laughs> that was a bold choice. Right. What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> So the, the but the glowy gods ultimately decide that they need to send the ghost of Julius Caesar to end communism in Russia. Don't worry, that'll come back. That's debatable. <laughs> it's just Caesar. It could be Caesar Milan. Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. It uh, don't... could be Little Caesar's Pizza for as relevant as it is to the rest of the movie. <laughs> right. That's fair. We thought that might be a possibility. It was in there. It yeah. was in there. Uh, Caesar salad. I know. <laughs> I write my notes here like, so then we cut to Nostradamus behind a racist mural of Native Americans. Sorry, audience. I just call them like I see them. <laughs> so then we cut to Nostradamus. Would you call that a cesarean section? Oh, hell yeah, man. Oh, well, oh, how dare you? Dare you? you staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm, I'm waiting for you to hate it. I'm waiting for you to hate it. I'm looking you dead in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So, <laughs> Dan, if you're tied to your chair, you can tell us. <laughs> I can't. I can't blink twice over audio. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no. I'm the only one who can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So okay. And then we learn from Nostradamus that America underestimated Japan, and we demonstrate that in the scene by Japan turning into a dragon and then flying to a heaven temple with PlayStation One graphics. Yep. Again, I just call them like I see them, people. <laughs> yeah. And then we rejoined the eighth. So we, we checked in on the ninth dimension gods. Now we're checking in on the eighth dimension gods. This is the group of people with the Princess Leia hair. Little girl pigtails karate class. <laughs> I, I'm confused about the dimension. I thought that was the Japanese gods. Yeah, yes, these are the I Japanese gods. Of the, the Japanese gods, gods are not in the eighth dimension. Well, I don't remember the gods of Japan being in the eighth dimension. <laughs> oh, you got to send a the letter eighth. to them, and you live in the same dimension. Yeah. Fucking walk down the street. <laughs> if you can teleport a letter, I think you would do it. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's I would a, do that. That's that's what email has taught us, if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fair. They just have sophisticated uh, Mailchimp. <laughs> so, uh, now I'm just picturing the eighth dimension, like texting the seventh dimension memes, and the seventh dimension doesn't know how to reply because they're not super funny. All I'm getting are boxes. The eighth dimension <laughs> trolling all these. <laughs> So, yeah, but so apparently each country has its own council of gods, which seems inefficient, right? You wonder if this the size of the council is based on population or do they all get the same number? Well, in Japan, it was all dudes, too, which yeah, is a yeah. Yeah. little mm-hmm. dicey. Good point. I counted about 41 or 42 dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not counting the god of fire who was drunk for a while. That guy gets yeah, it. he <laughs> shows up late. Yeah. Not counting the god of fire who shows up drunk like our co-host Ethan is like, I can't wait to be Saddam Hussein. That's <laughs> all you'll ever hear from me. <laughs> yeah, it did seem like he said he was going to become the god of the desert or whatever. Yeah, yes. And, and then, then later. later, we just show Saddam Hussein. Yeah, he's a <laughs> implied to be Saddam. Yes. Because America and the Middle East are going to have problems in the future. That's how right. I read it anyway. Right. Yes. Well, and also they, like, they seem to imply that Saddam Hussein was going to take America down one of these days. Now, this movie was made in 94. That's after Desert Storm was over. 
Mm. Yeah. Right. So they apparently they believe there was a second act coming. Wait, this was in ninety four? Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, some of the graphics I'm gonna forgive. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like it's not like people couldn't tell a coherent story in nineteen ninety four. That yeah. is the issue. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that, yeah. that I'm still mad about. Let's see. When was the Romance of the Three Kingdoms written? Ninety <laughs> three. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So we had been doing coherent stories for about a year. Yeah. That's that yes. point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so now we're going to lower ourselves one more. We're going to check in on the seventh dimension gods, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time. <laughs> Great. Can I I have to step back for one second? Yeah, exactly. Please. I need Go to ahead. talk about these Japanese gods a little bit more for a second. Sure. Well, uh, by all means. First, it does imply a council for, like, all other countries. True. But we don't meet any of them. No. And I understand the reason why there's the Japanese focus. Fine. Sure. I'm curious about what these other councils are like. Mm-hmm. Second. Interesting. All Japanese people. Ooh. All Japanese men, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the second thing is the drunk guy is the god of fire. Right. And that implies that everyone else who's in there is the god of something. That's a good point. I want to yes. know more but is about... is he just the god of Japanese fire, or is he the overall god of fire <laughs> checking in? It's god of Japanese fire, my man. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, but that makes the most sense. Yeah, uh, that's the most consistent. <laughs> oh my Could God. he control an American expat in Japan who tried to set a fire? <laughs> yes. I was thinking, he's like, he's like, oh, I'm going to go on vacation. America's fire is going to be just the same. What? I can't fuck with it? No! <laughs> the, just kicking rocks really grumpily. Stupid. Oh, oh, very oh, I'm limited going back, fire I'm going power. Back to Tokyo. There was at, <laughs> at no point was the God of Blank aspect of this important at all no uh, it could have been greg yes (laughs) exactly i think god of fire is important just because it's saddam i suppose (laughs) yeah because it does end up being saddam hussein and dan you know what since you've given us the gift of talking about these people i have to point out that the head of the karate class has a giant golden sword by his side yeah he does which he will never acknowledge or use nope nope it's just fucking scene dressing and it drove me insane (laughs) well but so but that's the thing like everything else in this movie the people in the happy science cult are like ah the sword of hakura or whatever (laughs) right yeah it's a it's a mythic uh uh, that's a good point yeah it's an easter egg it's a mythic easter egg right yeah yeah Yeah. well to give you an idea of how deep that goes like when they check in on the seventh dimension i wrote my notes oh that's where thomas edison lives and I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> doing this show is taking a toll, guys. <laughs> Was, is that something you know from another one of their yes, movies? Yes, from another of yep. their movies. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. So they're giving Thomas Edison credit for inventing shit? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. These people really don't know history. He's the right? god of the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> The American god of the light bulb. <laughs> Listen, I was willing to forgive all this World War One and World War Two shit, but now that I know Edison's involved. <laughs> oh, Jordan, they made an entire movie about how Thomas Edison invented a phone so teenagers can talk to the dead. Yes. Yep. That oh, sounds like a great movie. Yeah, I want to watch that. <laughs> yeah, I want to see that movie. It's Why not as good as he's made it sound, guys. You don't want to watch. See, that's how we get you. Uh, you're like, oh, I want to watch bitch. that movie. 48 <laughs> minutes later, you're like, I pray for death. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did at one point while we were watching this say, like, God damn it, I could be watching Alex's trial right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's how bad it is. It's not a good sign. That's how bad that movie yeah. is. Yeah. So, but now this is going to be a, one could say the plot of the fucking movie, right? The seventh dimensional gods are going to stand around a big circle talking about how the percentage of darkness in the world is getting dangerously high. Yeah. Right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So that's the seventh dimension. Yes. 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 The people with the like Jarvis style, Tony Stark visualization stuff. Yes. Nonsensical graphs that will get less and less useful as the movie goes on. <laughs> yes. Thomas Edison lives there. Yeah. Yes. He's the one who made the graphics. <laughs> he invented yes, them. It's certainly. starting to make sense. Where all else right. would you get them? The greatest <laughs> inventor of all time? I apologize. And that's why you keep them there. I, I apologize for asking questions that were clearly stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he invented the spirit phone and then R the programming language so that everyone could yeah. visualize the evilometer. <laughs> so, yeah, so now apparently World War II is going on at this point, right? Because the seventh dimension gods start like thinking about or watching World War II and they're giving different Japanese soldiers at God advice. Okay. Go to the right. 
Yeah. The right is a relative fucking direction. Like we're all facing the same way. Go to the right. That bothered me so goddamn much. The God keeps saying, go to the right. And I'm like, they're all facing different fucking directions. <laughs> and we'll be like God being like, look over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it out. has a real <laughs> has a real your wife is watching you play a video game you're bad at fine. <laughs> Not helpful. Top left. <laughs> so well why don't you grab the coins? Why don't you grab the coins? So, yeah, but so the goddess says go to the right. So they all go to the right or this guy's right and they survive. But then we check in on some different Japanese soldiers where the god is saying stay where you are and they don't stay where you are and they then they die. I thought that was the same group after they had gone to the right. Oh, was it? It could have oh. been. I'm not sure because I thought it was like, well, you succeeded this trial uh, and then you fucked up ooh, the second one. Ooh, you forgot to get the second trial. That's how I read it, but I might have been wrong. Okay. Yeah. It, it Luckily, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> I, That's true. That's very I, true. I truly did not understand that part at all. And you explaining it just now. I have no memory of that. I remember some <laughs> Japanese soldiers yeah. and explosions. Yeah. I had no idea there was a reason. I thought they were just showing World War II for fun. I feel like reason <laughs> is overstating the case, Jordan. Good call. Yeah. yeah we need true. to talk to the Nostradamus Scenario Project about that reason. Uh -huh. I, I, got a, I got a scenario for him. <laughs> Nostradamus. I'm going to kick their ass. That's, uh, that's my scenario. <laughs> Also, like, let's just acknowledge that for the rest of this movie, because the rest of this movie will be World War Two ish. Ish. It's going to be World War Two from the Japanese perspective, which is uh, uncomfortable to say the least. So, so not just from the Japanese perspective, because the Happy Science Cult, like, they deny the existence of the rape of Nan King. They like. But yeah, they really paint the Japanese as the good guys in World War II. They are h terrible revisionists his historically, and as some, as some of their most disgusting beliefs. Hey, if, 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 if Japan? But, no. <laughs> yeah. but there, they, there were still shots of, like, concentration camp. Sure. So there wasn't a denial of the Holocaust. No, 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 no. Which is nice. No. Yeah. We have a very low bar. Yeah. We have a very <laughs> low bar. <laughs> so... Yeah, so but we cut away from that World War II footage long enough for one of the gods to consult the floating lemon of destiny. Again, I just call them like I see him, guys. <laughs> but we learn that they're sending light angels to Earth to try to counteract all the darkness because the darkness is now even worse than it was in Atlantis. What? Yeah, that was a real bummer. <laughs> I literally wrote, they threw that in there just to upset Dan and Jordan. <laughs> Because it's, it's a throwaway line like you're watching a Star it Wars TV show. It is not a show. throwaway line. How dare you? I learned more about the, uh, the end of Atlantis <laughs> by going to the Happy Science Project's website or whatever. And it turns out 12,000 years ago, uh, Thoth, he was the, re <laughs> he was the reincarnation Christ. of Alcantar at that time. Right. And that yep. was back when it was 33% evil. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a real 39%. It's, it's a, huge. Yeah. 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 Huge difference. Oof. Yeah. Uh, so, so then <laughs> despite somehow being the reincarnation of the well, savior, then, but then there's also, I guess they still let out Atlantis die. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, number mm -hmm. got too high, baby. Matt, can't let it happen. Nope. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like inflation. Mm -hmm. This is the Fed. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They're the Fed of evil darkness. Right. That makes a ton of sense. <laughs> we've got to we've got to increase the evil interest rate. <laughs> yeah. We got to yeah. raise we got to raise the evil by two points. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I, I have to point this out because this is the part of the movie when we check back into the seventh dimension here. This is where we meet meteor haired lady with a yes. big curly cone of hair up above her. And I just that needs to be recognized. Right. And admired, honestly. It felt like that actress saw the scene shoot with the the karate class with the little girl pigtails and she was like oh okay we're doing crazy hair for the movie yes. except no one in this dimension has crazy <laughs> hair but her <laughs> so she showed up and she was like huh huh it's a snow cone on top of a twisted leg oh shit you guys are all just a normal hair <laughs> yeah. I like the idea that she shows up for work and they're all like oh that's 8th dimension shit get the fuck <laughs> yeah, out right. of here <laughs> Maybe trying she, to angle it for promotion lady or come on. She, or recently she got demoted. 
Oh, Ooh. there you go. There you, you go. Know, you never know. Maybe she's from right, the right. Dimension. Right, right. She was 8th Dimension, and then she's or, shown up all embarrassed. Like, or, she got relegated to, from the Premier League. Or she's a liaison between the two. Mm. We don't know how this works. There's a lot of fucking bureaucracy. We need to talk to the fucking Nostradamus scenario project and get some clarification here. God, Con- yeah. yeah, considering uh, how much paperwork is uh, important in this place. I, I, I can yeah. tell you uh, between the time we're recording this and when this comes out, I can assure you that no one will be talking to the uh, most <laughs> anonymous <laughs> scenario <laughs> project. We have yet to find them. Yeah. <laughs> but if I do, <laughs> we will. <laughs> You know, she used to work up in the eighth dimension, but then she started a thing with Rostradamus, so they moved her down here. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't her, want to kiss and tell. But. Killed her self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's not cool. <laughs> also, there's this amazing graphic that we have to talk about where the world screams. Yep. Right? That's just the whole planet just was like, ah, god damn it. <laughs> was that who was screaming? How did yes. Miss that? I, I heard a scream and I was like, well, that had to have been somebody in the screen, <laughs> but it was actually the entire earth. That was the, yeah, read was I was the supposed land to get. mess. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah. Right. I'm always well, disappointed well, with actually myself. That kind oh, yeah. of makes sense though, because there is the whole idea that if evil gets over a certain percentage, then the earth will cleanse itself of humans in order to like make the balance Reset. right yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the earth would be screaming if evil was getting higher, almost as like a little warning. Yes, oh, exactly. so, so now you're arguing that the actual Earth itself was screaming. I thought they were saying that all the people on Earth were screaming. No, 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 no. The sense. planet was screaming. The yeah. planet itself. Okay, well, that this, does this make makes sense. total sense. Yeah, yeah no, no. no. <laughs> Let's give this movie some credit. If yeah. I were this planet, I would be furious all the time. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but they need more Angels of Light stat. So then we watch the applying for more Angels of Light bureaucracy go into action, right? Like they send a letter to Japan and to the higher dimensions to see if it's okay if they send extra light angels. We genuinely will never be able to communicate how much of this crazy cult movie about the dimensions saving the world from an all cleansing catastrophe is about the like fucking workplace strategies of those different yes. dimensions. Yeah. And there's like there's like bureaucracy. It's it's annoying. Yes. Yeah. No, you could set the office in the seventh dimension, and you'd be like, well, <laughs> yes! "Yeah, that makes, that makes as much sense." Ricky. <laughs> so they fill out the angel, the light angel application. We see the eighth dimension Japan gods get that letter right and and consider it. So there is a moment where the god, when he received the letter, he bowed immediately after that to the empty air. <laughs> and I, I really appreciated that. Like, you know, just because they're not physically there doesn't mean that you shouldn't bow whenever you receive a letter from them. I appreciated that a great deal. <laughs> That's just showing respect. Yeah, I like it. Do you guys not thank the radio waves when you get a text message? That's weird. <laughs> if it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and by the way, what we're seeing here, so the, the mythology of the happy science cult is that their cult leader is El Cantari, this 300 million year old ghost that's been reincarnated as all the great people in history that he could think of at the time, right? But then all of the other people in the cult may or may not be light angels sent from heaven to cleanse the earth. And you won't know until you join the cult and take all their tests and give them a lot of money and stuff. And then I bet you are. <laughs> you tend to be, yeah, eventually. I mean, and if you're not, you should probably give them more money. Well, if you gave money. them more money, yeah. then just maybe, yeah, they right. They can do more tests. Yeah, then, exactly. You know? like, you got, yeah. We got, oh, we got a secret test just yeah. in a double angel for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such an expensive test for us to run, though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the angels all decide or the uh, gods all decide that they need to send a bunch of cult members to the happy science cult right and then fucking like main god comes to that weird Japanese god council to explain that to him to explain that Japan is where the savior will be born and clear the filth from the world yeah well, that's I, good I, luck I, I didn't like that language you know that no, it was an issue it, especially when you're like you know, we're talking about like World War Two ideas, and yeah. now you're going to send yeah. somebody to cleanse yep. the Especially, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. Yeah, like yeah. This. after after they were like, oh, Korea's fighting weird. You know, like oh, we have, <laughs> we have nothing yeah. to do with that. So crazy that they would fight like that. Oh, oh so bup, 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 what would it even be about? Yeah, we're angels. He. <laughs> 
We, we're weirdly nationalistic. <laughs> yes, yes. We're angels representing everybody, but mainly Japan. And, and yes. you know what? Our deity ship has something to do with international borders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That are invented by yep. humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very xenophobic hierarchy of the universe. Watch Very out dumb. for the bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. It looks like these gods have a very important cult to inspire, so we're going to give them a minute to plan. But we'll be back in a flash with even more of the terrifying revelations of Nostradamus. And tacular, tacular, Christmas, Christmas. Uh, Eli, what what are you doing? Is that is that a Santa suit? Sure is, Noah. I uh, just got to get into peak shape for our live Christmas tacular, my Holiday spirit needs to be lean, mean, and full of Christmas sheen. Right. Well, well, look, I- I'm sure diving around our Christmas decorations in a very sweaty Santa suit is, is doing something. But if you want to get into tacular shape, why don't you just try FitBod? What's FitBod? FitBod's smart workout app scientifically tailors an exercise program to your goals, equipment, and schedule so you can keep your full calendar and your summer gains. That's true. I do have many summer gains worth keeping. Their algorithm uses data and analytics to scientifically build your best next workout and maximize results. See your muscle usage, recovery, achievements, and workout streaks right in the app. You're in control with workouts designed just for you so you get exactly what you need. I don't know, Noah. It sounds great, but isn't that expensive? Nope. For less than the cost of one session with a personal trainer, you can get a full year of personalized workouts with FitBod. Keep your workout momentum going. Get personalized workouts from FitBod that get tougher as you go. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's 25% off your subscription or try it free at FitBod.me slash GAM. All right, Noah, thanks. So you're going gonna to do FitBod? Yeah, just let me finish my mistletoe touches. You designed this whole ad around that pun, didn't you? I did, yes. Okay. Sir, the world evil levels are rising. Johnson, go check it out. Yes, sir. What can we do? We have no choice. We have to send as many angels of the light as possible. Oh, come on. 90%? That includes babies and shit. We must hope that the holy voices of the angels are heard. Yes, we must. Fuck! What does this button even do? That's nothing! Why is so much of the afterlife technology? Have we considered reaching out to the gods of the fourth dimension to see the seventh dimension beings back to Earth for the Great Awakening? What the fuck are you talking about? That is wise. I'll reach out to the ninth being of the eighth dimension to see if they can send Caesar to bring down the great bear in the face of the snake of old. I am officially rooting for hell at this point. Dude, what's what's the deal with Johnson? Uh, his last assignment, we sent him down uh, to watch the Alex Jones defamation trial. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Do we have more Tums? Who ate all the Tums? You, man. It was you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin our action on Nostradamus's empty book. And it's going to explode again. But this time it's a nuclear book explosion. Right. Yeah. So this is the obviously the time where uh, America nuked Japan, at which point we reached 66% darkness over the earth. So things are getting serious. That's a lot of dark. Yeah. yeah. yeah a lot a, of dark. Listen, I won't argue. Huge mistake on America's part. Yeah. I, sure. I, I believe so. <laughs> and Nostradamus called it. Yeah. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Also, I was so bored at this point that I came up with another character. Oh, really? <laughs> All right. And that is... Colin Jostardamus. Uh, here's one of his uh, his bits. The year 1999, seventh month, from heaven will come a great king of terror to bring back to life the great king of Agolimois before and after Mars to reign by good luck. I host Weekend Update. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. 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 No, Dan, that was great, Dan. That was great. <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. First off, first off, let's get to the bottom of this right now. He came up with the Colin Joster Thomas first, and then he tried to shoehorn that shit in there. That's a bad joke. That's exactly what Colin Joster Thomas would do. That's true. true. Now now I'm back on. Now I'm back in. (laughs) I needed the tag. That's uh, that's what the problem was. So, yeah. So, now what we learn here, though, is that the reason 
that it was bad to nuke Japan is because when you release nuclear explosions, you destroy both the physical and the astral bodies. So if we're not careful, we could accidentally nuke heaven. This really fucked Jordan up. Yeah, this caused an issue for me <laughs> because because the moment I find out that nuclear bombs kill astral beings, I'm like, well, let's fire a fucking nuke into that seventh dimension. Those fuckers need to go. Right. <laughs> like, and if if I can nuke the seventh dimension and win, then I must nuke the seventh dimension <laughs> and win. This, Do you understand? This cult has given Jordan hope that he I, can kill God. I have to <laughs> attack and dethrone own god <laughs> and if there's a bunch of them then i start at seventh mm. that makes yep. sense to me i mean no that makes sense because given how bad they're fucking it up yeah and the fact that there's no other way apparently to change leadership yeah right and the sixth dimension seemed fine they were just <laughs> bringing people in and bringing people out <laughs> sort of a gate yeah yeah uh, more of an airport than a dimension. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm ready to fuck with the eighth dimension just yet. They can teleport letters. God knows what they can do else. Mm -hmm. mm. But the seventh. What about the ninth? <laughs> ninth? <laughs> we'll see. He's working his way up. He's working his way up. I don't want to put too much pressure on you. You're in the third now. So can I like... just destroy one dimension first? <laughs> Dan, are you familiar with Jet Li's classic film, The One? That's the process Jordan is going through right now. It's going to be a while. <laughs> So, okay, so I don't know Japanese history to know if there's any specific significance to this. The, the movie jumps then to 1956, and I ha I feel like that's probably when their leader was born or something. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I took that from was it, our, too. That was our guess, yeah. Yeah. So, but this is, they're talking about bringing it, I guess, sending out angels of light on a lecture circuit, <laughs> right? They're like, we're going to send a bunch of angels of light now, and then they're going to grow up, and then they're going to go, and they're going to do lectures, which you should probably pay to go see. They just the probably teachings amazing. are scheduled. <laughs> 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 Boo. <laughs> So, but yeah, so they explain that. And then we we drop in on the sixth dimension. Yeah! <laughs> Are you a real six, six Dan? That's what, uh, is that what they call it? <laughs> First of all, I am so psyched how much time we got to spend here because let me just throw this out there. I'm going to go ahead and say... 44% of the rest of this movie will just be families seeing off their dead loved ones before they get reincarnated. Yeah. So this this really was about as close to where a plot happened. Or, yes. or at least yeah. cuz like it was we made a note of it. It was 56 minutes in before <laughs> there was yes. like a semblance of a plot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to be these people in the sixth dimension being born and then living Right. Sort of. That was the arc. Like, we yeah. got an hour of a history lesson. Uh, then sort we, of. Yeah, well, we got an hour of a history lesson. <laughs> and then we have the introduction of the characters who we will meet at the end of the film mm -hmm. in, in their fully realized forms, I mm -hmm. suppose. Right. So we're in the... You know how the sixth dimension has weird upside-down soft-serve swirls in the sky? We're in one of those. The right. bowl, the bowl, the ice cream bowl. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everyone is watching the giant panoramic television screens full of the Tutti Frutti zebra spinning super fast. Yes. That oh. is on the giant swirly ramp of fate. Yeah. yeah. Can I, this is when my favorite part of the movie happened by far my favorite part of the movie, because we get into the ice cream dimension and then we find out it's the dome of reincarnation and all of a sudden, it comes out upon one dude wearing like a doctor's coat, looking all sciencey, who's like, "Whoa, it's gonna be a busy day!" Ugh, <laughs> like you can have shitty work conditions in the sixth dimension, yes, yes. In the dome of reincarnation, right? Mm -hmm. Like this dude's like, "Fuck!" What are you shorthand? <laughs> what is my day gonna be like? <laughs> Brutal. I really wanted more of that, though. I wanted that guy, like, watch that guy getting denied overtime at HR, being told he needs to be a team player. You think you think not enough of this movie was was devoted to higher dimension bureaucracy? Really? That was your complaint? You know what? That's fair, Noah. I, I withdraw my complaint. <laughs> I heard this was part of, like, a five-part series. I assume, like, part three or four is all just... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, just there's yeah, like absolutely. sexual harassment policy yeah. videos. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Actually, that's a really short one. Just let it fly. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Don't worry, we don't let ladies in on the high dimension. Just someone trying to sexually harass an angel, which is made out of eyes and screaming child's faces. I I don't know where I could put my hands here. That's a lack of imagination on your part, my yeah. friend. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, but so the but the but that bureaucrat, the one that's like, well, it's going to be a busy day. He then goes to address the next crop of yet to be born of, in his term, future babies <laughs> for the Tokyo A7 area. Right. So these like seven or eight people, these are going to be like the first members of the cult, I guess, or something. And he's like, all right, future babies, are you guys ready to be reincarnated? And they're like, are we? We've dressed in tuxedos for our big going away party. It's not even tuxedos. It's like Victorian. Yeah. Type yeah. Dress. yeah. 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 <laughs> These people look ridiculous. Yeah. It was, it was a combination of Victorian era suits with frills and shit and mm. then traditional Japanese kimonos. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was upsetting. Yeah. He says the, the classic lead in to exposition, as you all know. Well, then why the <laughs> fuck are you telling me? Because as you all know, you'll enter into a, a woman during her ninth week of pregnancy. And that's how you know that we're super duper anti-abortion. Totally. <laughs> It'll come up again. Yeah. Loud alarm bells. Yeah. The moment the moment nine weeks happened, I was like, oh, God, here yeah. we go. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't get a guest spot from Mike Huckabee just walking in. Hello. Hey, nine <laughs> weeks sounds right. I'm in the sixth dimension, too. Guitar solo. <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with Isaac Newton. <laughs> Teach him how to fuck proper. But everybody's like talking about how they're really worried about the Earth because everybody's getting really into materialism. Hopefully the A7 Tokyo future babies can do a little something about it. Yeah. Future right. babies. <laughs> I would watch that show. Babies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, I was with you 100%. <laughs> okay. And he's explained to everyone, he's like, you'll be a doctor. And then he turns to the only woman who's spoken in the movie so far. And he's like, you're going to be a teacher. Yep. And I really wanted her to be like, fuck, God, another 40 years of reading The Giver. Another four. <laughs> uh, here we go. There's also this weird moment where one couple is like, it's a a man and a woman. And he was like, well, you know what? You were my child in the last uh, life. Let's switch it up and I can be your child in this life. And I'm like, wow, even Heath doesn't know that page on Pornhub. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what? Yeah. This is, of course, where some woman checks in with the Hall of Female Stereotypes chessboard that I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Yeah. I was like a little a, confused there. A nun and a fucking Buddhist monk, and then there's like a sexy school teen. It's like they, it's like they were outside at the dumpster of a Halloween adventure. Yeah, as it burned down on October 32nd, <laughs> and they were like, "Don't worry, guys, we can use this for our movie." <laughs> hey, hey, listen, you got to cut costs where you can. Making a movie is expensive. Yeah, and no, you're a for small sure. cult at this point. It's only the 90s. Well, they yeah. had to, they had to license the B-roll of Saddam Hussein. Totally, right? They had yeah. to make a big scorpion you know there's a lot of <laughs> that costs. did happen yeah, yeah. yeah the the graphics effects team is just is insane Ooh. yeah and it's pretty expensive in 94 yeah i'm assuming almost everything was stolen almost every <laughs> i'm i'm almost certain they yeah. snuck into every location to film this movie yeah they weren't supposed to be in that hospital mm -mm. they weren't no. supposed to be in that forest that wasn't -uh. their gazebo yeah no no yeah <laughs> Yeah, the the real seventh dimension is really pissed that they broke it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you filmed your shitty movie here. Fuck you. you. You know, they rented the seventh dimension as an Airbnb, but of course they didn't sure. change the code in between no. guests. If, so, we, yeah. if we know anything about these higher dimensions, bureaucracy is important. So yeah, you need right, a right. Yeah, yeah. No, you can yeah. slip it yeah. into paperwork. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, so that lady goes to her light hole and then everybody descends via lightning bugs or something to go inhabit pregnant women. Keytar! Yes. Keytar! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was good stuff. It was a good it was a good sting. The music Dan was conceived to. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciated the the small section that does absolutely not pay off later where they're they're just talking to this lady and they're like, hey listen, your life's gonna be shit. You know? It just is. Yeah. And the, the kid is like, I choose a life of hard, difficult stuff. And she's like, I guess I choose to care for this asshole. Yeah. Ugh. And as soon as he said that, I was like, this is going to be that abortion thing again. Yep, this yep. is this is a message. Yep. Yeah. This is coming back in a bad way. You got it. Then we, we cut back to Nostradamus wondering what the hell he's doing in this movie. <laughs> At this point, Nostradamus is just wandering around, right? The way you do, like when you first get home, he's unloading keys by the door, yeah. trying to call his cat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
At this point, I was so bored that I came up with oh another character. Gosh. Oh, oh God damn it! This was Marcel Prousterdamus. <laughs> oh, you won me back. I'm real. I'm deep in. No, what does he say? Don't you? Here do Here was this. one of his writings. I know what you're gonna do. <laughs> in England, one without a trace of royalty will master. Two months he will rule. Twenty months he will bleed the lands, and his time comes quickly. Also, I wrote Remembrance of Things Past. <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> So, all right, wait. So now, again, audience, I'm just going to have to ask you to keep up with me here. We cut to Bermuda, where a floating translucent tampon appears in the sky. It's like a spaceship, a tampon ship appears in the sky. Mm -hmm. And then we're at a dairy farm with lightning crashing all around us as a reptilian shapeshifter drinks the blood from a cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was... That was a lot. <laughs> Especially for when they introduced it, which was not early. Right. Mm, it, no. was it was late. It was late. They introduced it late, and then they were like, just in case you were wondering, don't worry about it later, though. But for right <laughs> now, reptilians are in play. Yeah. yeah. Then we see the light angels going, damn it, those reptilians are mutilating oh! the cows again. <laughs> the, they didn't try and stop the plans of the reincarnated A7 citizens nope. or anything. Like, nope. They were just hungry. Just having a snack. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they seemed all right. Eat that That's cow. That's what we're, we were going to do with those yeah, cows. We eat the cow. The, yeah. yeah. Who Honestly, are we to judge? We drain the blood. So if you're just draining it, you're frankly doing step one for us. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the cat-tailed Venusians, when they actually get down there in their dildo ships, uh, first of all, costuming note, impeccable, perfect, no True. notes. <laughs> I thought for so long, I was like, what is trying to escape from that man's ass? Yeah. It's a little tail. He's a cat. He's got a little tail. 1994. These are the first furries, my friend. These are fucking explorers. The problem I have with introducing this and then dismissing it <laughs> so quickly is that I am, I, listen, if you've got seventh, eighth, sixth, ninth dimensional gods that are all humanoid and some of which are Japanese nationalists, <laughs> explain to me what got, do the reptilians have their own set of gods? Their own right? Oh, dimensions. interesting. Do they have, they have to, otherwise you're suggesting that only human beings are capable of having gods. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then why do the reptilians give a fuck? If I was a reptilian and I knew they had gods and I could not, fuck it. Let's kill them. You know, yeah. like, what's the point? There's no God. I really hate to tell you this, Jordan, but based on the three other movies, that's exactly what's happening. The reptilians, what? the reptilians are demon souls inside the bodies of things from Saturn and they oh. don't get gods. So they're bitter about it. So they, they turn into Jewish people. Well, I'm sorry, what now? Yeah, they well, it, it just, oh, boy. It, it kind of imply that they're Jewish. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Well, I mean, this matches with a lot of these conspiracy theories we've heard over yeah. the years. So it's not that yeah. crazy for us to hear, but that sucks. Well, that's the thing is what we're watching here is like the Avengers movie for conspiracy theory cinematic universe, right? The fucking <laughs> yeah. reptilians and the gray aliens and the tampon ship all mutilating cows together so they can fluoridate our water and take over the media, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a real bummer because I, I think we talked, we said something along the lines of like, there was a moment where we relieved that this wasn't anti-Semitic. Uh, <laughs> right. You, that might have been a thought you had in your head. So Cause I don't, be. I don't remember that being a conversation. I think, I, no, I, I think it was just that we, it. I think what, well, actually all that happened was we were like, well, at least they didn't deny the Holocaust. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. Yeah, that's the that whole thing. Yeah. We were like, ah, oh, they didn't deny it. That's I good news. I was too confused by everything that was happening to say whether or not it was anti-Semitic. Mm, that's a good point. <laughs> like, yeah. This is how desperate the members of this podcast have gotten is that we're like, Hey, the Holocaust was real, huh? It was. <laughs> <laughs> So, meanwhile, we, we cut back to the light angels and they're like, well, we keep see, sending light angels to be born and s solve all these problems. What the hell is happening? And then another light angel is like, abortion. You know? No! <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> let him go. Let him go. Let him get it out. <laughs> so... That uh, yoga's paying off. Yeah, right. yeah I was going to say, oh. yeah. It isn't bad. I'm glad we recorded near this well. We should smoke. <laughs> <laughs> also, I just want to point out that when he mentions that they got abortions, he gains a hat of despair. 
for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kind of a, a sad hat. Yeah. Convertible KKK hood or something. Yeah. So, okay, now it's 1981, which I have to assume is like when the cult started. Whoa, we're not going to talk about how you can just abort angels and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, okay, it's, so these people free will. are seventh dimension ass <laughs> God people. But oh, fuck it. I, I, I listen. Hey, I'm not ready for a child. <laughs> fuck you, angel. Like, that's it. That's the whole Apparently, thing. That's all it takes to destroy a God. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, right. They can't just send it to so like, oh, well, I guess we're going to have to put that one in a a different nine week pregnant lady now, but no, no. but, and here's the other problem. All right. Here's the problem it's that I've written made, down because they made agreements though. makes me so angry. Cause Dan and I talked, I talked to him about this seconds ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the idea that you can predetermine people, like when you're giving them that six dimension orientation mm -hmm. and be like, I'm going to be a teacher, you know, like do that whole thing. And predestination is totally real. But you can abort people like, right. oh, so close. Yeah. Oh, we almost made it to being a teacher. But then abortion. <laughs> so that's weak. Yeah. We have an omniscient seventh dimension that includes like professions, but it can be defeated by Sam's Club plan B you bought in bowl. <laughs> totally. This brings me back to my nuke the seventh dimension issue. <laughs> Amen, bro. They are a lot weaker than it seems. <laughs> <laughs> the seventh dimension is weak. <laughs> We're weak. already selling Nuke the Seventh Dimension TV shirts Absolutely. with your face on it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll live there. So yeah, so but so then we cut to 1981, which is this is obviously when the cult starts, right? Because we get a guy who shows up, an American used car salesman, materializes in the sixth dimension and tells him that it's time for El Cantare to awaken. Now this is where we realize that at least partially. It's at least some parts of this movie were filmed in English, then dubbed into Japanese, and then subtitled into English for us. <laughs> yep, you betcha. Which, honestly, is there a better description of the happy science cult mindset than yeah. subtitling your way back into a language you don't have to subtitle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, at the same time, what are you going to do? It is, it is, almost, I actually almost prefer it to them being like, oh, I'm going to have a white dude speak Japanese with an English accent. Like, I mean, in a way, I, I kind of wish American movies would just let people <laughs> from countries speak their own fucking language and then subtitle it. Fair why not. are we having, why is Brad Pitt speaking with an accent? Don't do it. <laughs> you know? So I'm down with this. I'm down. This one was one good choice. I think that they made. All right. I, appreciate I mean, it. they did dub the English guy over, but okay. Well, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, but he was an asshole. Yeah, no, yeah, that, he was clearly an asshole. <laughs> You're all over the map. I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm coming at this from all angles. Well, meanwhile, hey, callback guys, and by callback I mean any two scenes relate in this movie. Caesar is finally done with that assignment to de-communist yes. Russia. Right. Nailed it. They, they, we cut to all of the glowy gods in the in the fucking gazebo going like, wow, Caesar was so good. He didn't there wasn't even a war or anything. I was so shocked that that came back. Like, yeah, I I knew, first of all, like when it when Caesar was first introduced, like, aha, he's going to tear down communism. Sure, right. sure, sure. I was I was so baffled that the movie took the time to revisit this yeah and then brought in brutus for no fucking reason totally so in case you thought we were talking about caesar salads yeah right <laughs> yeah. or well, caesar milan fine. unless brutus is a dog that was right. very disagreeable well the problem Ooh. is we were we were trying to figure out who caesar and brutus were we assumed that there had to have been like real life i mean you're saying that caesar ended communism right there right. has to be yeah. a person so i thought it was reagan right but and then there has to be a Brutus to murder him. Well, maybe. Okay. Oh, yeah. That maybe dude. it's Reagan and John Hinckley Jr. <laughs> yeah, John Hinckley. Yeah. Uh oh, see, I was going to say that dementia is Brutus, but yeah. Ooh, no, but, 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 well, then it would have killed him before he was president. But Brutus didn't fail in his assassination attempt in, in history. No, oh, no, maybe no. Brutus was maybe the Brutus was aborted. <laughs> he just wasn't there this Abrortus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so okay and so we get that they hooray communism fell and there was no bloodshed except for all the people who died in the gulags and shit ah, come on yeah <laughs> so meanwhile fucking nostradamus is talking to his wall about eagles and scorpions and shit some more this is where they imply that saddam hussein is going to take the u.s down at some point 
Yeah. Right? Yeah, he was really close. Yeah, almost. He almost got us. Yeah, he almost got us. Once again, the seventh dimension, not that good. Not that good at shit. No, Carl no. Rove wanders through. I'm going to go hang out with my friend Mike Huckabee, but that sounds like a reasonable worry to me. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> so then we, we cut back to the light angels, and one of them says, you know, there was a great samurai once who lived whose name was such and such, and, and we're all like, oh, is are you ever going to mention him again or justify having brought him up? He's like, nope, sure, sure I'm not. You want to watch Nostradamus drop a tiny globe into a giant Reese's cup? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. And, may, and it looks like he's getting domed from his shadow. It yeah, does. All right. Yep. <laughs> Great times. And sometimes yeah. his shadow mugs to the camera. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, just so you know, I'm here. I do space work. <laughs> While I was watching him with that globe, I was so bored that I came up with another character. Oh, oh my Jesus God. Christ, dude. It was Ghost with the Mosterdamus. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by Beetlejuice, of Here course. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Here's one of his great quotes from the 1988 movie. Uh-huh. Uh, from the depths of West Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the East. It's showtime. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I love I'll, I'll stop. No, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, I refuse to let you, you stop. I know you, you got more. Everything. Stop now, I man. know you yeah. got more, buddy. This too is much, the whole too episode. Much, but way too much is just enough. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So they're waking up the light angels. Now we're going to start checking back in with those A7 Tokyo future babies. They're all grown up now. So we cut to a hospital where one of the future babies is a doctor. Right. And he's an asshole. We know this because as he walks uh, through the hospital, everybody stops and goes, he's such an asshole. That guy's an, an asshole. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the point of that. I missed that. I too. missed that. I No, no. I mean, I got that they thought he was an asshole, but yeah, I thought yeah. it was because the other doctor was part of the darkness team. Yeah, you thought he was a reptilian. I thought something. he was. Oh. I thought he was a reptilian trying to kill the angel, dude. I didn't even get. I guess I wasn't caring enough, but like I didn't put the pieces together that that doctor was the doctor from the sixth dimension oh yeah i got that all the other characters were the right, sixth right, dimensional right. babies who came no, no, future no. babies yeah for some reason mm-hmm. the doctor i was just like oh it's just another plot yeah <laughs> no i had that i had the i had the distinct sense that that doctor who was his rival at the hospital was actually the mm. darkness because the part where he was a ghost and the doctor and his assistant were just kind of looking down into the camera quentin tarantino in a trunk style mm. and it was like when do we dissect him? And he's like, fucking now. Right. You know? <laughs> he seemed while, eager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While the guy is ghost talking to them, they're like, let's cut this dude into chunks. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you dissect? Yeah, right. So so the doctor collapses. Everybody's like, oh, my God, the, the arrogant doctor collapsed. And they all run in and he flatlines. But we're watching out of his dead eyes or whatever. And he's going, no, I'm still alive. I, I, I object because he's a ghost now. Apparently. It was it was like that episode of House yeah. uh, with uh, Most Deaf. Yeah, yeah. It was exactly like that. Yeah. Trapped in his body. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> You're really not going to have a Most Deaf Tradamus character I, for I, was, I no, literally I? fell uh, perfectly silent in my ready room. <laughs> yeah, Deaf Most Tradamus. Yep. I would not have a character that was such a struggled man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was about to see. Here's the problem. I got you. I got there with most Tradamus, and then I realized right. the deaf was yeah, in the yeah, middle, yeah. and yeah, I was yeah, like, "Oh no, no I'm yeah, fucked." Yeah. Right and it was yeah. too late. I had already hey, started hey, the most. Leave this to the master, okay? Yes. Yeah. This is why the pros. <laughs> oh my god! This is why I make the big All right. bucks. All right. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So, now, I'm getting, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> now we're gonna make his head too big, and then he'll end up as both Tradamus. So yeah, so so the doctor's ghost walks away from his body. They say they say he died from overworking. I'm like, that's not a real diagnosis. But he he wanders off and he comes across a guy at, at a shrine who explains to him that he's a ghost because he died. Right? Yeah. Right. This was the first time ghosts were ever available to this movie <laughs> to be a part of things. Like in in the reincarnation zone, you're like, oh okay, well the the ghosts live in the reincarnation zone. That's fine. You know, but it turns out ghosts can also live on Earth and maybe hell and then just kind of continue living on Earth or go to the sixth dimension or not. Right. Yeah. He's there's tra- really no rules. <laughs> he's actually there are like a ridiculous there's a 
fucking whole bureaucracy of all of rules <laughs> that they govern this. And they try to explain it real quickly. They're like, ah, yes, you would have returned to the sixth dimension, except that you had this and blah, blah, blah. And your soul is conflicted. And so therefore you are trapped between the dimensions and don't believe in God or whatever or something like that. You know? Right, right, right. But here's the problem. Later on, whenever they're describing, and I'm sorry for, uh, I'm sorry for spoiling the movie. Oh, uh, in case you, in whoa, case you guys whoa, haven't seen whoa. it. Whoa, I don't know that we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, just don't, don't, don't listen to this now. Wait until yeah, you listen yeah, yeah, to yeah. it in continuity during yeah. our, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, whenever they're like, okay, 70% of Earth, half of Earth is going to die with the right? pole shift. Yeah, yeah, with the pole shift. And they were like, if that many people die at once, 78% of people won't make it into heaven. Just be milling around. And you're like, wait, is that also a possibility? Like, there's just, yeah. a, there's just a cutoff. Like, hey, listen, you were the best person, but we're slammed, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, sorry. <laughs> the kitchen's busy. Like, there's, yeah. like, we're just slammed. I'm sorry. You're going to have to either you wander the even, earth or go no to hell, you good person. On the list. <laughs> For a, for a wait even anymore, yeah. You know when you've got like a date night going? Yeah, that was an issue for me because then this that negates this whole priest bullshit. Like yeah. the issue is you get you died on the wrong day. They had enough time <laughs> yeah. to screen you. Yeah. Yeah, if you had yeah. died on the 50% of Earth died, then you could have slipped in. Yeah, right. any other day. Especially, I mean, I know that, like, Wednesdays are pretty, you know, low traffic days. Yeah, yeah, 6 to 8 p.m. is their high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to die at that point. Yes, yeah. it's about time. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately. Yeah. God forbid you die on a Friday. Oh, man, a Friday night, you are fucked. So, yeah, so, but the doctor, the dead doctor's ghost talks to the priest here for a little while about why he became a doctor in the first place and how he lost track of it because of all the materialism and this is where he remembers his future baby going away party from earlier in the movie and he's like oh that's what i was supposed to do <laughs> all the tuxedos but yeah so the but the doctor he says like or the the priest says to the doctor so now where do you want to go how, what do you want to do and he's like oh i'd like to go somewhere where i can repent for all of the evils that i've done and how i lost track of my mission and then he comes back to life they send this goes back to his body yeah yeah dope man that right yeah well so that's <laughs> that was really cool I was like, I wasn't expecting him to go there. I was expecting him to go to hell, but no. No. He's yeah. still got a job to do. Apparently. Yeah. yeah. He's got some soul doctoring to do, damn it. Fuck yeah. What exactly is the point of being a soul in the sixth dimension going like, I'm going to be a doctor because I love people, but then on Earth, you don't love people. Like <laughs> You just get caught up. So what is, you know, you have like, to have a near-death experience to remind yourself that you're supposed to be doing this, which is apparently against the character that you were... Uh, already going yeah, to have exhibiting right yeah. yeah yeah they should have aborted that guy is what i'm trying to say <laughs> Damn. 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 better for everybody that's the back of the nuke the seventh dimension t-shirt right there <laughs> they should have aborted that guy <laughs> all right well i'll tell you what there are no acts because there's no plot but coming back to life is at least a dramatic enough thing to earn us a break but first let me give act th the rest of this stream of consciousness the hard sell what the actual fuck? I mean, seriously? Like, what the fuck? Find out the answers to those questions and more when we return for the but then nothing conclusion of the terrifying revelations of Nostradamus. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. You know, that transition from summer back to school can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Pumpkin spice, the crunch of leaves underfoot, or a tremendous amount of stress. And just when things start to get busy can seem like the worst time to take care of your mental health, but it's also the most important. For years before I started therapy, I told myself I would start when I was less busy. I'd take care of myself when I was less hectic. And that's why I'm glad there's BetterHelp Online Therapy. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime for free. No awkward therapist breakups required. Since they've become a sponsor, we've had a ton of listeners get the help they need for the first time through BetterHelp. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash awful. All right, everyone, gather around to bid farewell to your heavenly family as you journey to Earth. Go, young Jonah. I know you'll be a great doctor someday. And you will be an amazing teacher. 
Yeah, wow, look at us. What about you, Eli San? What will you be? Oh, um, you know, I actually don't remember. Uh, I think maybe they haven't actually told me yet. Uh, so, er. don't be silly. Instructor? Yes. What will Eli San be on this trip to Earth? Oh, let's see. It's got my notes here. Oh, that's right. He's, he's going to be a podcaster. Right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, podcaster. Yeah. What's a podcaster? Is it like a fisherman? Yeah, it's kind of like that. So you're going to be a doctor. No, huh? no, 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 no. Podcasters create audio files. They catch no fish. Thank you, instructor, for that clarification. Well, what kind of audio files are you going to make? Are they messages of hope and light? Yes. Kinda. I mean, they're mostly going to be Christian movie reviews that people fall asleep to, but lots, lots of people will enjoy that. Oh, um, th that sounds great. Oh, come on, Alan. You're going to teach some kids the ABCs. Relax. I didn't say, I didn't say anything. It's the right? way you said it. Um, it's the way you said it. Mm. <laughs> And we're back for yet more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with some other fucking rando that we've never met. And I don't even think is a future baby looking over environmental data. Right? Yeah. But he's so smart. He needs two computers for his yeah, research. He notices something. He moves from one computer. He's like, oh, I better put this on my important computer. <laughs> <laughs> I was staring at those computers. They made me really sentimental. Yeah. yeah. I mean... I, I understand where you guys are coming from, but if you recall the 90s, <laughs> you needed an entire computer to run a different Word doc. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't, he wasn't going from one computer to the other. He was going from 56 kilobytes of memory to 56 <laughs> kilobytes of memory. One you know? of them, one of them okay. he was doing his work on, and the other one was that paper airplane game. You're where exactly. You're <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yeah, but he's discovered something interesting in the environmental data. So we cut to an environmental summit where he's presenting this. And this is some random, weird bullshit. But basically what he's arguing is that all the countries that have nuclear capabilities are attracting more natural disasters because the seventh dimensional gods are pissed and afraid that Jordan's going to nuke them. It's, it's so good. He's like, if you look at this graph and then this one. And then all three of them mushed together, you will see... No, that's nothing. That's It's a big pink blob. <laughs> yes, right. That's the thing. Even in their own bullshit map, the shit doesn't match up. <laughs> Unless there's a bunch of nukes in the ocean. Right, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's definitely that possibility. You don't know with reptilians about. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> Those are underground reptilian nuclear bases. Duh. Uh, totally Reptiles can be in the water. Amphibious. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Alligators. Yes. <laughs> They've got nukes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how you can tell them apart from crocodiles. <laughs> so I did. I, I did not put those pieces together. That, that was the argument. One hundred percent. No in idea. His summit. Absolutely yeah. no clue that that was his argument. Yeah. I thought he was just letting everybody know. He's like, hey. Listen, we're all going to die soon. I thought that was the whole message. I didn't know there was an that extra. That was the subtext. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I saw that the map had like countries that have nukes. Right. And then like these are the countries that have wars. And I thought the argument was like having nuclear weapons it makes you more likely to have a war. Yeah. So it was like a disarmament message. Yeah. I didn't get the natural disasters coming into it. I, I think no you idea. and I were talking during we that. We could have I been. think we must have been. We were trying to figure out the rest of the ghost shit. Yeah, I mean, there's the a movie lot just started. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was an, an hour, hour and 20 minutes in started. and it just started. Yeah. <laughs> so we were still getting our popcorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he also is listing problems here. And I, it's a very much again, a one of these things doesn't belong. He's like, the world is full of problems. Racism, climate change. The movement of the Earth's crust. <laughs> that one was interesting. That stuck out. Yeah, there yeah. Was, that one was stuck out, but also the philosophical oppression stuck yep, out. Philosophical. Because I was like, "You're just talking about you. Come yeah. on, yeah. Oh, come on, come on." People making fun of me on the internet. My culty ideas. Yeah, yeah. And it might as well be like. And people are censoring the Happy Science Project. Right. Isn't that bullshit? Yeah. They were on that. They were on that First Amendment tip. Uh, Nineteen ninety four. They were. They were yeah. shadow banned on <laughs> Apple IIe's. <laughs> they were actually. They were actually started by Pat Buchanan. He was yeah. a teaser. 
So, but he says at the end, keep in mind, this is supposed to be this international conference of scientists. At the end, he says, behind those natural, this is a quote, behind those natural disasters is the invisible consciousness of the earth. And everybody's like, yep. Sure is, and they stand up. Standing and they cheer. ovation, yeah. Standing ovation, <laughs> so, which means they paid them to agree with. They, they you know, it'd be great as if a room full of people all agreed with us. Let's pay for that to happen. <laughs> we'll call it the Nostradamus Revelation Project. <laughs> <laughs> it would be surprising for a massive symposium filled with scientists to hear that the Earth has its own separate consciousness and not question it. And just, can scream. Yeah, just like <laughs> standing ovation. Like, yeah. holy shit. Oh, yeah. What, an, what a discovery. Mm-hmm. I will yeah. say, bald future baby from before is there. Sure. Right? He's he's sure. at the sam- summit. He starts the standing ovation, in fact. Oh, that's I, I, I why that, that guy yeah, showed right. up. Okay. It's, it's all, all, right. all tied together, guys. So, okay. So, so I, his... I was so capricious in yeah. judging this movie. Yeah, yeah. It all <laughs> makes sense. It does, it does connect. I, I feel uh, a little embarrassed now. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of which, now we're going to go check in on Teacher Lady for, I'm going to say, my favorite scene of the whole movie, right? She's holding a class. She starts class by asking all the kids what they want to be when they grow up. And one little kid says she wants to be an angel. Yeah. Okay. I have a question, and I'm just going to reveal my own ignorance here. Is is this what Japanese classrooms are really like? Do children scream at each other in perfect unison <laughs> whenever any one of them speaks? I mean, in anime films, they are. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> that's it. We're, we're watching a live action anime, right? That's what we're yeah. doing. If they if their following movies were all animes, they wanted to make this one an anime. Yeah, you know that. You know right. they just couldn't right. afford it. Their <laughs> their special effects budget was bad enough as it was. We need to get this <laughs> message out. There's no time for animation. <laughs> There's no time right. for animes. <laughs> oh, and also this movie is slightly racist towards Koreans, so we don't really want to <laughs> fuck with them. Yeah. Right, now. right. Damn, these prices really <laughs> jumped up when we eliminated them uh, as an yeah, animation when, group. When the Korean animation studios went bye bye, so did our budget, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> So yeah, so but this little girl wants to be an angel and all the other kids are like, that's stupid. And the teacher's like, no, angels exist. Let me explain to you all about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, nowadays the SCOTUS has to, says you have to let her do that. So, yeah, you yeah. have to fund it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she's aware of it, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought a whole, whole lot of this is like, you're not really aware of the, the thing agreements you made before you came to being a baby. Well, the doctor certainly wasn't. Yeah. 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 And I don't remember my, you know, oriented, my pre reincarnation orientation either. So. Right. Right. Well, right. We're going to have to give you a near death experience. See if we can jostle that out of you. <laughs> Watching this movie was close, but yeah, not quite there. <laughs> but she's like, yeah, but no, I actually saw an angel once. So that's how she knows, right? She understands. Now, she saw an angel once and started figuring out the logistics. Mm-hmm. Right, because the kids are like, "Well, what do angels eat?" And she's like, "Oh, angels don't have to eat; they don't poop either." As it turns out, that was their first question. Their teacher was like, "Now, children, angels are real, and I've seen one." And the kid was like, "So, old country buffet, or do they bring snacks with them from heaven?" <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, honestly. <laughs> yeah, they're shitty kids. <laughs> These kids, you don't understand. These kids grow up to be the kids in Battle Royale. Oh, that's the okay. issue that we're having. Okay, it's a prequel. this is the same. Yeah. This is the same universe. 1994. And no, it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. We have seen the sixth dimension, so we know that none of these kids are angels. <laughs> that's right. That's right. These are just shit kids. Yeah, these are annoying, shitty kids who scream a lot instead of uh, yeah. yeah that there makes was sense. that one kid though who kept bothering the kid in front of him. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, and he was infuriating to me because he was setting up jokes that had no punchline. Yes. Yep. He was giving setups for jokes yeah. like what is blank? As yeah, if yeah. there was going to be a punchline and then there never was. <laughs> yeah, no. He was he Ugh. was the the mo of the Stooges for sure. And yeah. then there was no curly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was infuriating. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. He was the one shoe dropping of comedy. But the scene ends when he decides that he too would like to be an angel, and so obviously her her fucking and then the teacher's like, "I can make that happen," yes. and then she pops a gun. 
<laughs> oh boy. Back in back in ninety four, that was not as terrible as it was now. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a way worse thing. Right. Ninety four was a different story. Mm -hmm. So okay, and then this this bit blew my fucking mind. I had no idea. And again, I know I know a little more about the happy science cult than most. But then we cut to a scene where this lady is walking by, in their words, the house of God's curse. Right. And then we go inside of that and people are behaving all cultishly, except except nothing can look cultish when you compare it to happy science cult. Yeah. So I can't tell if this was a for or against moment. One hundred percent. Whenever she hit the guy with the stick and then the darkness thing, yeah. I was like, is, she, is the darkness going in or is it coming out? Because it could go either way. Yep. Yeah, I, I think this is supposed to be making fun of Asian exorcists. Like, isn't that silly and maybe a dark practice? But you are also crazy con man. Yes. You're not. Don't throw stones if you're the happy science cult. The, sure. the only way I could take it as like this is supposed to be someone bad was that she took money and looked really satisfied. Yeah. And then there was also a boy oy oying sound. There was yes, the boy oying sound. There was a duck yeah. quack. The, that's the thing is that like it was just showing happy science cult shit, but it was filled with cartoon sound effects. So you're like, oh, she's not really magical. <laughs> it reminded me of Jamie Loftus did this podcast where she went down to uh, American spiritualist societies in Florida and all this shit. And she was going through American spiritualism. And essentially the only thing that holds together American spiritualism is that every spiritualist says that every other spiritualist is a fucking con man. Right. You know, <laughs> like, so, so it is, it is like him being like, Hey, come on, that religion's stupid. They don't know about the eighth dimension. Yeah. Right. You know, right. you're <laughs> like, all right. Okay. Fine. <laughs> right. No, you're right. All right. Well, you need to, you always need to have a scapegoat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Of course. And again, this time it seems like it is only tertiarily the Jews. So that's, again, a <laughs> high, bar. Yeah. high bar. It's a step in the right direction. <laughs> she turns around from doing the exorcism and lights a menorah. Damn. Oh, you were oh, so close. You won. Oh, so yes. close. Yeah. So now the lady who's outside of this, though, that's who we're really focused on. We're not focused. We'll never see the house of God's curse or the lady from there again. Nope. It's the lady walking by that this scene is about. Yeah. So she walks by and then she, fl she sees a bunch of kids playing in a park or big field of dirt one or the other and then she flashes back to the hospital where she learned that her son had cerebral palsy yeah mm -mm -mm. because the writers the lazy ass writers at the nostradamus scenario society couldn't think of any other way to introduce that to the plot mm -hmm. yeah and yet at the same time nostradamus knew about aids that's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such a weird moment when they dropped in. Like Nostradamus is like, watch out for AIDS, and you're like, holy shit, yes, man! It is 1994. It's going to be worse than AIDS, and it's like, well, that's it not very 1994 useful. as fuck right now. <laughs> I really wanted it to cut over to Nostradamus's assistant. I'm sorry, what's AIDS? It's like the 14th. <laughs> oh, right, I should tell him about AIDS. Good, good looking out, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know that plague that's right around the corner? Same deal. Same yeah. deal. <laughs> yep, yep. So the, the thing with the cerebral palsy, I thought, okay, this we're back to abortion messaging here. Totally. This is very much like... They gave her the option. They were like, your kid's going right. to probably die. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that was that was supposed to be she's like that was deciding before he was born whether to keep the baby in this instance? Yeah, she was I, the oh, one okay. in the sixth All dimension. Right. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right, because she was the mom. Yeah, she she yeah. was one of the future babies that, that And the child was one of the future babies mm -hmm. too, who wanted to have like a challenging experience right. yeah. to inspire people. To inspire people. And then he fucking died. Yeah. Good work. I feel like there were better ways to inspire people but yeah okay yeah right okay that now it all makes sense now this movie makes perfect sense so yeah she goes yeah. in with some birthday presents but her kid is i guess also in a coma or something i don't know oh he's dead he's dead she sees his ghost like the next day he was dead yeah right no like in a, a, 20 minutes later she sees the ghost yeah and the dad does not care no he wasn't in the sixth dimension so he wasn't part of this whole we're planning out our shitty life thing yeah so he's just showing up there putting in the the daily and he's furious that his kid had some sixth dimension cerebral palsy on his head <laughs> you know that's an issue yeah so, yeah, so they're sitting down. They, she goes in to give the kid presents. The kid can't respond. And then God turns their TV on. Mm -hmm. Jordan lost his mind. 
That was great. <laughs> God didn't. No, no, no. You're not understanding. God did not just turn the TV on. God sent a small beam of light the size of a TV yes. to suddenly hit the TV, turn on, and then disappear. Yes. And it was exactly the message that these people would need to right see. Right on Because if there's mm-hmm. anything that famously needs to be physically contacted in order to turn on, it's a television. Yep. In the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do. I do appreciate God being like, "Fuck, fuck, 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 fuck!" You got to turn on ABC and channel eight. Channel eight. Channel eight is what you need right now. What are you guys fucking doing? Stop watching TGIF. So right for it's you. Channel eight. <laughs> God's making an angel stand on top with the antenna. All right, hold still. Hold perfectly still. Oh my God, if you guys keep watching Full House, I am going to be fucking <laughs> furious with you. And I'm God. So yeah, but the newscaster on the TV is saying, you know, if a member of your family is handicapped, again, their term, you must have the courage to move forward because that's what God wants or something, whatever, right? Yeah. And just then, mom hears some laughter outside and wouldn't you know it, it's her son's ghost mm-hmm. wandering off to go to heaven now. Right. And and clarifying how happy he is. He's like, I loved being trapped in my body and not being able to do anything and then dying painfully with a toy on my chest I'd never touch. Yay! (laughs) Hi, Mom! You know heaven is real and that life is meaningless and you can be reincarnated at any given point in time, so there's no reason not for you to kill yourself right now! Yay! Bye! Yeah. I am inspired. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so inspired. (laughs) Now, Dan, that that little boy sure knew enough about the universe do you know what i would call that little boy what would you call him ghost radamus he already he said, okay yeah. Yeah, he already he did ghost, ghost with the most radamus yeah that's, yeah, that's really unfortunate really come on it's unfortunate <laughs> eli said, i know it seems, it I know it seems like a technicality okay. <laughs> because ghost <laughs> wasn't the hero we, we, of the we the will Damas. we will soon be going down to nostradamus's dungeon again so there will be another character <laughs> that I created. tied to the whipping post radamus we're on. not there yet no we're going we're actually going to italy for the cosa nostradamus <laughs> uh, well done is that in italy or is that more <laughs> cosa nostra right but isn't that uh, our thing isn't that more no that's the italian America mafia. mafia all right who cares yeah. <laughs> This is going to be an argument for the rest of our lives. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, but mom goes outside. She talks to the ghost. The ghost comforts her. It wanders off. The dad comes out. And he's like, is this done? Can you make dinner now or what? <laughs> right. You done talking to our dead son because full house is on. We can change the channel. <laughs> he gave a nice little, he gave a nice little smile of acknowledgement of like, hey, listen, my wife is looking off into the distance at nothing. I'm going to be right here for her. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. So, okay, so we cut back to the seventh dimension where the light angels are explaining that El Cantari is making more light angels wake up. Light is up by 5%. This is the first time not bad. the dark hasn't gained, guys. Wrong. Wrong. Really? Wrong. Because she doesn't say light is up 5%. She says light is up 5%, but darkness is still gaining. It's a Ooh. net loss. El Cantar is a net loss. How can wow. the light versus wow. dark? How can light? I remember. Be- it. I wrote that shit down, that man. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> nope. nope. Seventh dimension math. I just I don't understand seventh dimension math. I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's- light is increased by five percent, taking us down to sixty-one percent. However, darkness is increased by eight percent, bringing us back up to sixty-four <laughs> percent. <laughs> ah! <laughs> So, and of course, the main angel here is like, we need even more light angels. And I'm like, dude, that has been your solution to literally everything since 1956. Okay. So I, I appreciated how many times people in the seventh dimension yelled hurry. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> and yet we've, we've watched a movie that takes 60 rough odd years yeah. <laughs> to occur. And they're like, hurry, we need more light angels. 20 years later, yes. uh, light angels are finally adults. <laughs> yeah. So. And it's a movie that takes 15 minutes to get to the fucking point <laughs> yeah. and, and of anything. 56 minutes to get to the start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So, okay, so th- that, then we cut back to Nostradamus's dungeon. Right, and I got to stop you there because this is where my new character comes in that I had. This was a, this was the idea that I had when I was All right. watching this. This is uh, French Toaster Thomas. Ooh, I like this one. This sure. has a good start. Let's, um, let's hear him out on this one. So this is the character. This is one of his lines. This is the mm, sketch. Okay. 
The blood of the just will be demanded of London, burnt by the fire in the year 66. The ancient lady will fall from her high place, and many of the same sect will be killed. Ooh, pour syrup on me. Ooh, I love powdered sugar. Ooh. Oh, man. I did not expect the sexual undertone. <laughs> yeah, thank angry. you. I was going to say, I yeah, there's been a... I was- Listen, of all the things I thought I was going to come to, I was not going to come to sexy French toast. Right. French, that wasn't yes. French toaster Domus is edgy. That's what it's makes a, it French. French toaster yeah. Domus fucks. It's a That's challenging what... character. <laughs> yeah. French, Nostra, uh, French toaster Domus was the first one to predict that people would eventually eat ass in public. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of Martin Lawrence's early stand-up was actually ripped off from <laughs> the French Toast of Thomas wrote. <laughs> so yeah, so Nostradamus is predicting a great earthquake in Moscow. That's it's not exactly like predicting a hurricane hitting North Dakota, but it's pretty fucking close to that. That one was new. That one was new, <laughs> especially whenever they're ostensibly aware of tectonic plates. You know, like yes. earlier they were like, the plates are moving. And then they're like, Moscow's got an earthquake. And you're like, all right, come on now. Yeah, the Nostradamus says that if the Kremlin collapses, that'll be the beginning of a catastrophe. I'm like, that's not a prediction so much as a ha- like demonstration of how if thens work. Right, <laughs> I, I'd be way more impressed by a, a prophecy that was like, and if the Kremlin collapses, it'll actually be fine. Right. Believe it or not, <laughs> it will usher in a new age of ice cream flavors. Yes, yeah, oh, interesting, interesting prophecy. It would, yeah, that's it would bizarre. It would be, it would be kind of great if that scene where everything explodes and like they show that loving tribute to the Statue of Liberty right before its head goes flying directly into your face <laughs> yes. from an explosion. It would be great if immediately after that it cut to and things were better. Yes. It, was great. <laughs> it was fucking great after that. It was wild. So yeah, so he he predicts that after the Moscow earthquake, refugees will flood into Japan, which demonstrates a Palin-esque understanding of Russian <laughs> geography, I guess. And then and this is where he says that a disease will attack, attack America that's even more terrifying than AIDS, uh, as we mentioned. But OK, so not, uh, enough of this past shit. Let's cut to the future. The near future in 1994, 1990 X.A.D. 1990 X.A.D. <laughs> it makes more sense that date now that I know that this was 94. Yeah. I didn't know that uh, <laughs> as we were watching it. But that makes more sense because then that could still be like yeah. a couple years in the future. That's, or no, was I, the was, I was totally yeah. like, yeah. this could have been 98, 99, and they're still right in 1990X. Yeah. And you're like, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is th- almost 30 years old. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, but now the world is coming to an end because the darkness has gotten out of control and we have boarded all the light angels. So we see like a volcano and then Paris gets nuked and L.A. floods and and the Hollywood side is just fucked. This is where the Statue of Liberty explodes. Oh, yeah, that was good stuff. <laughs> Hollywood sign was underwater. That was pretty, yeah. that was pretty yeah. interesting. It, it looked like shit, but yeah. 94 looked pretty good. That's true. That's yeah. Now, no, again, it's the, the context of it. Like those effects were all right. They look bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. yeah. No, I mean, honestly, the day it after probably cost to- something. If if you if you watch the day after tomorrow and this movie side by side, you'd be like, it's good that the day after tomorrow didn't start with an hour of history that they lied about. Mm. But <laughs> there's really not much difference. Yeah, other, at the end that, of the day, yeah, yeah. they've yeah. both yeah. been featured on this show now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> back in the seventh dimension, the darkometer reaches ninety five percent, and the one guy goes, "Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no!" It's a pole shift. Dun, no! dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and they even... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pee real quick while Jordan yeah, yells. No, yeah, no, 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 I got it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so they show a graphic. Just in case you're thinking, wait, do they think that means the Earth just turns sideways and starts spinning in another direction? They show you a graphic demonstrating that that is, in fact, what they think yep. a pole shift is. Yeah, yeah, the Earth is just going to do a doorknob twist to the yeah. right. <laughs> it's not. It's not. The, it's not the magnetic field. It's just uh-huh. going to be like, whoop, and yes. then we're back. Yeah, this and was, we're back. This was another point where Jordan lost it. <laughs> well, because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, if you're going to shift the Earth in that direction <laughs> that quickly, Oof. that distance, mm. 
Is it possible that you are going to go fast enough that some humans will just fly yes, up there? Yes, right. <laughs> they, you know, like, they are you to, suddenly going to no. look over and see like Jerry gone while Here, you're attached to a belt like in Twister? Here's the reason they have to because it stopped. You know? Right, like, it did. It, it turned, but it, it, it stopped on a the, dime. Yeah, it know? stops on the right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You have physics to, dictates that everyone would be thrown. Yes. <laughs> Now, to be clear, if the poles shift, I guess nobody knows exactly how it works. But, but like most likely, the problem there would be problems, but they would be like satellite problems and increases mm. in skin cancer and pigeons getting lost and shit. They wouldn't be floods, earthquakes, and boring Monday night football games or whatever the fuck this movie thinks they'll be. Right? Your compass will be weird. You know, I don't know if the Earth adjusts. A full forty-five oh, degrees. Oh sure, if that in less happens. than one second, <laughs> I don't know what We're problems. The yeah. problems are going to be way bigger than cell yeah. than cell phones. They're going to be bigger than tsunamis. God knows what could happen right there. <laughs> We're finally going to give a shit about the plate tectonics. That's what kind of shit is going to go down. The Earth's crossed. The Earth's crossed. Yeah, but this is where they say that half the population will die and 78% of them won't get to get into heaven because there'll be too much of a bottleneck, I guess. Too bo- it's too much of a bottleneck. <laughs> yeah. Heaven can't handle that shit. There's a limit. Yeah, no, there's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> and then we cut to the title card says Missile Base North Asia as though Missile Base was the name of the city and North Asia was the country. <laughs> Right. Right. Because a huge part of the happy science cult's mythology is that Korea and China, that North Korea and China are going to nuke Japan out of existence. That's their plan. Right. Hmm. And the happy science cult advocates for nuclear deterrence it, 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 for pre, a preemptive nuclear strike against North Korea and China as a solution to that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I do. I, d- appreciate- I definitely didn't get their nuclear deterrence vibe <laughs> from no. this uh, this film. Now that is that is funny. That's such like a that's such the white nationalist version of Japanese nationalism yes. where you're like, listen, those people who we totally murdered and raped yes. and destroyed their world <laughs> and killed everybody and then ran them and enslaved them and then rape and pill you know, that whole thing. They are going to evilly nuke us. Right. <laughs> yes. That's, whoa, everybody's coming after white people for no reason. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. You should start a cult. I should start a cult. I'm pretty good at yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and keeping in mind that they actually ignore or, or deny, you know, the rape of Nanking and all of the shit that happened in Korea. They, yeah, of course. Like, they, don't, they pretend none of that happened in the first place. Yeah. Right. If they were white, they would deny the Holocaust. Oh, absolutely. They have it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But they do acknowledge the Holocaust. Uh, yeah, 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 of course. Because, you know, it was their buddy who did it. <laughs> All right, so, and so, okay, so the missiles are being readied, and in the seventh dimension, all the light angels are like, they're going to nuke Japan. They can't do that. That's where the most important person on Earth lives. Bold claim. Bold claim. <laughs> Heavy science call. That's Kentaro, right? Yeah, yeah. Kentaro, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, Ryohu uh, Osaka, right? That's his name? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays a pretty minor part in this film for being like the most important person in the world and the savior. Okawa. Yeah. Yeah. Ryo Okawa. Okawa. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Osaka. Yeah. Okawa. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. bad. It doesn't do a lot of work. Thank you yeah. for pointing that <laughs> right. out. I mean, if you're the director of the film, I think <laughs> you know that to direct and star in your own film, especially if it's your debut, that might be a little bit, a uh, little bit ambitious. Yeah, you're, you're casting no yourself as the yeah, savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously you did in real life. Yeah. But to cast yourself <laughs> as a savior in the movie, come on. Gosh. Yeah. No you want one's somebody who looks better ego. than you. You want a handsomer person, <laughs> you know. Was Kurosawa still alive in the 90s? I think Kurosawa was still alive in the 90s. Uh, yeah, Why didn't sure. Kurosawa direct this movie is my real issue here. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Seventh Samurai and Seventh Dimension. Really? Yeah. Oh, there you go. It all, it all yep. ties, it's all the same universe in, in Kurosawa films. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, okay. So then the Light Angels are like, hurry, everyone must head to the Savior so we can wrap this stupid fucking movie up. So we get a bunch of people, all of the future babies yelling to the savior and, and all the people in the earth going towards this Japanese guy, right? Yeah. One forest. Yeah. it's a, Everybody's in one forest. This is like, honestly, it was kind of a disturbing moment because I know some of this was done with, with CGI and everything, but but like a lot of people were involved in this because this is a huge crowd shot, right? Yeah. Again, some of it was CGI'd in, but still they, they had to have like scores of people to make this happen. 
Can yeah. you confirm that it was CGI'd in? I, I don't know. I'm hoping. See, that's kind of my vibe. If you're a cult leader, you can get yeah, that many people that's in a true. forest. <laughs> it's not it's not George Lucas fucking giving Luke Skywalker a medal. Yeah. You know, having to <laughs> recreate all those different bullshit. It is a cult leader who can just grab a thousand people on a on a whim, right? Yeah, no, they they claim eleven million members and are estimated to have as many as thirty thousand members. <laughs> so you can probably Go stand get in the woods. Yeah. It's yeah. not hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, You're doing a favor for the savior. Listen, of all the things a cult leader could ask you to do that you would do, go stand in a forest. That's a win. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You're, right. Honestly, you're right. That's fair. <laughs> if a cult leader asks you to stand in the forest, being an extra in a film is the most benign Ooh, outcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even better. I get to keep all of my die. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was the latest calling from the cult leader? Pretty awesome. <laughs> Pretty There's good crafty, for me. <laughs> and no one put anything up my butt. It was a great weekend. <laughs> Despite that. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. But then this, the missiles are still getting ready. So everybody prays together. Like everybody all over the world. Everybody except for the people of missile base North Asia, I guess. All pray together. Right, we've cut to people in all different countries praying. All the light angels are coming down to Earth, so we see them standing around in New York City and in Tokyo, which are the only two cities, apparently. <laughs> yeah, those are the main two. Yeah, we got them yeah. covered. The big two. I would put. I would put those two, like those two, and then like. Paris, Texas. I think those three are the main cities <laughs> in the world, right? Those are the three? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. And then old school Zeus-based Sistine Chapel God shows up. Right? Flowy white beard God shows up. Yeah. With the whole weird neon lighting on his face. Yeah, yeah. With the purple shit. And, and then he, that causes the sky to open up. God draws a huge pentagram that he sucks all the prayer light through mm -hmm. and he creates, he's, he's got to take out this missile so it doesn't get the savior. He does this with a worldwide earthquake that causes explosions and bridges to collapse. Millions of people. Was that what happened? Yes. That was all God's fault? I think. I think that was the implication. <sighs> Man, this is complicated. It knocks down the pyramids, which is gravitationally quite difficult to do. <laughs> here's, here's, I think, what fundamentally is my problem. My sense of, like, morality is not included in this movie whatsoever. Yeah. So, so if you tell me that God did something, you are not distinguishing between God or the devil or Zeus or whomever, like... God knows what it is you could be talking about. So I don't have a moral center. No, that's fair. For that's like, fair. oh, well, this person definitely wouldn't do that. Nope. Anything's possible. <laughs> well, we're talking about a guy who flooded the entire world because he was pissed off at the people he created, right? So. We're talking about a God who won't let 78% of people in heaven because it's busy. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's in the weed. Yeah, God is a <laughs> shitty TGI hostess. <laughs> Welcome to TGI Fridays. The wait is a thousand years. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the whole world gets a giant earthquake and all the infrastructure is destroyed. But it's okay because there's a super cute puppy drinking water from some of that destroyed infrastructure. So it's all good. I was cute. Honestly, when I saw the puppy, I was like, I'm back in. <laughs> it was really, it was a really cute Finally, a character to root for. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> There's this dog and the dog and from I Am Legend. Those are the only two that I care about. <laughs> Why would you bring up the dog from I Am Legend? Yeah, right. We were having such fan. a good time, man. We were having a good time, What are you guys going to cry? Come on. It was a movie. Yeah. It's a okay. movie to you. It wasn't even the one with Vincent Price in it. Get out of here. <laughs> it was a lifestyle to me, Jordan. It was a lifestyle to me. <laughs> so, so everybody's like, everybody's like goes out into the earthquake wreckage to, to laugh and, and be happy and everything. And then we check back in with, with Nostradamus one last time. No, nothing. We're just gonna Dan? go right by. Oh, that? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I don't. They I, I were didn't, setting you up. I didn't for know I was being queued up. No I, mean, I, I mean, I did think of another character. No, I know. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Th this is a uh, Graft versus Hostradamus. 
Um, <laughs> here's here's this character. It's oh, going to be boy. in the form of a PSA, I think. Oh, He's okay. a PSA? Yeah, I think there's a PSA All character. All right, okay. Here the we go. The Great Empire will be torn limb from limb, the all-powerful one, for more than 400 years. Great power will be given to the Dark One from slaves. Come, be very, very careful when you get a transplant. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me the name of that Nostradamus one more time? Graft versus Hostradamus. <laughs> graft versus Hostradamus. So Graft versus Hostradamus. Like the that's, graft would be... That's a condition that happens sometimes naturally. when transplants are of rejected. Course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your immune system. This is really a PSA kind of thing. This Th- is, no, no, no. That's really nice this, of you. This character is... Uh, I mean, we could have gone with uh, with Rump Roastradamus. Sure, uh, sure. That's definitely... That was an option. I, I didn't know what to do one, with it. Right. Rump Pot Roastradamus. There were so many meats. Well, this one's... This one, obviously, is for me because you look at me and you think that's he's going to need another another <laughs> liver eventually. No way at those organs liver, are to the a liver line. is going to be necessary. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have one in a cooler right behind us. Hey, you know I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, so uh, Nostradamus explains that Antarctica is going to break apart and the ancient civilization that used to live there is going to thaw out so everything will be fine. Doesn't matter that London was destroyed in a tsunami. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Did you get an idea of who the civilization underneath the Antarctica was? Yeah. Because we saw the civilization like be revealed. And it meant nothing. And it no. just disappeared. Like that was the end of it. Like, yep. is, is there. Is that, is that followed up on in the sequel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not that I remembered, which I was actually pretty impressed by. I was thinking it was, I, th- I was thinking it was Atlantis, but I could be wrong. I, I don't know. Ooh. So Atlantis was Moo. Antarctica. Could be Moo. Ooh, because the pole shift. Could be Lemuria. So, yeah, yeah, it could be any of them. Right. Mm. There's yeah, a bunch. Real. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's go Lemuria. That's, that's a good one. Atlantis is overused. If, Let's if, go Lemuria. If the earth shifts 45 <laughs> degrees, you might go from tropics to ice. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> No, it makes sense. That is possible. Yeah. No, it's all, it's all coming together. So, yeah. yeah, so Nostradamus is like, yes, the pole shift is going to cause a lot of death unless, of course, some cult from Japan prevents this disaster. It would be really helpful. Mm-hmm. And then, meanwhile, just in case you thought everything was going to be okay, not sure why you think that, but just in case you did, we see an alien saw blade landing somewhere and some reptilians get out. Dot, dot, dot. Right, right. So they won, right? Like in the end? I think. Well, because yeah, everybody so dies. Well, yeah, because then the light angel comes out and he's like, hey, don't don't look at this and think we don't still need more light angels joining our fucking cult, man. So why don't you right. sign up now, you know? <laughs> right. Like it subscribe. Does, it, it did remind me somewhat of those like 1960s, 70s nuclear war movies where it'd be like, Everybody dies at the end and you watch people die of like radiation sickness. And then at the very end, they're like, this could happen to you. (laughs) Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 If if there's not enough people in our cult, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm I'm Dan Jordan. I'm dying to know what you think here. I, I, I often ask this question at the end of our shows, but never with quite as much curiosity as this time. In your opinion, what was the moral of this story? I honestly have a tough time answering that. I think because I've realized a bit in the process of recording this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that you have helped me understand some of the stuff I saw. True. No, there's a lot I didn't get. On the first viewing, I mean, like, Obviously, the moral of the story is whatever the cult wants you to think. Right. Like, well, sure, 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 sure. Of course. The yeah. moral of the story is join the cult and we'll tell you the moral of the story. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in terms of the actual text, I don't know. What do you What do you got, Jordan? Um, I mean, ultimately, the moral of the story is that gods are fucking useless <laughs> and we should nuke them in the seventh and we dimension. Should nuke nuke them. Them. No, no. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm being like, I mean, nuking them would, of course, be the ideal solution. And ethically speaking, if gods can be killed by nukes, you have a moral obligation. You have a moral to obligation do it. to yes. do, yes. Yes. do but, it. Yeah. But here's my problem. All right. So you've got some gods, and those gods are going to watch Earth's darkness meter go all the way up to 39% before they think it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 So, so that begs the question. If you're going to let it get up to 39% and your solution at that point is wait 20 years until angels ripen into adults. Well, these babies need to grow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why can't you look at 5% and think maybe this is going to go south? Right. Yeah. Let's just, get this just done. Just in case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just in case. These gods are fucking useless. They watch the meter go up, try shit and 
fail. Mm-hmm. Right, like fail. Yep. Consider this. I don't wait for the sun to go all the way down before I turn my headlights on. And if it took 20 years for them to warm up, I'd start much earlier. Yeah. <laughs> totally. yeah, yeah. So, so really, what, what I take away from this, and, and honestly, all myths, is that following this god is a way to be an idiot. Okay. Like it is, it's mm-hmm. unfortunate, but these people are stupid. Like every time I read the Bible, I'm like, oh, well, God's a moron. That's an issue. <laughs> or the Quran, like, oh man, Allah is kind of dumb. Like, oh shit. You know, like it's, it's fucking terrible. All right. So well, that's, that's the, my lesson. Yeah. That actually is the moral of the story. Well done, sir. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So just real quickly, while we still have you guys here, if our audience wanted to hear more from you and they, and they're not familiar with your work, where should they go? Well, we our website is knowledgefight.com, but sure. I actually had two more characters that I had. Uh, oh, prepared. wow. There's bonus. Yes. bonus Take so, us home. Take yeah. us home. So the first one is. Uh, Are you sure you want to do them back to back, though? Yeah. Because you're going to have to you're going to have to make sure that you got the order right. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I got that. Go. All right. Okay. The first is Wizards of the Coast or Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Wizards of the Coast Obama? (laughs) (laughs) Wizards of the Coast Odamas. This one is, uh, a common soldier will make an empire, but he will eventually meet his fate and be condemned to the Great Rock. Uh, Check out the new uh, uh, Magic the Gathering set that's going to be coming soon that people will forget (laughs) about, and then we'll try to get you to buy another one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Flashy cards, uh, good art. Also, Black Lotus. All right. So that's that character. Okay. This is where the order is really important. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's the last one. Okay. It, uh, it is co-hoster Bob. <laughs> co-hoster co-hoster Domus. Co-hoster Domus. Oh wait, sten- I'm looking forward to co-hoster Domus. <laughs> yeah. A great. This stench- isn't going to go well for me. <laughs> A great stench will come from Lusanne, and they will not know its origin, and they will put out all people from distant places. Fire seen in the sky. A foreign nation defeated. I'm Jordan. Bye. <laughs> was that your version of my no no you're yelling you're you're long yelling oh, yeah. My, oh yeah, the well, no yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that was yeah. your you, you gotta you gotta commit to it <laughs> i'm sorry well done I'm sorry. that was the way to end that was the Absolutely. way to end you got you the def- order right you definitely had the the order correct <laughs> i never doubted you at all Dan. i thought thank I, you thank you, you. you definitely you're brought it home stradamus so, hey well hey! no no again leave it to fresh <laughs> professional <laughs> Uh, and of course, of you. for the audience, very quickly, if you want to check out more from Dan and Jordan, uh, you can also just check the show notes for this episode. Dan, Jordan, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you so much thank for having you. us, as always. What a delight. And well, that does it for our review of the terrifying revelations of Nostradamus. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to lean back into this thing, apparently. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? In a small coastal town, Bigfoot is sighted and children go oh, missing. Oh, good. The town's police chief is fired, leaving only the sheriff. When the sheriff goes missing, the town's only hope is Chief Harrison to battle the beast. He finds himself without his weapons and must go hand-to-hand with Bigfoot. Will his strength in God and law enforcement (coughs) training be enough to save the children in the town? (laughs) We'll be kicking off our spooktacular with what I have been assured is not ironically made, the badge, the Bible, and Bigfoot. Oh, my God. Oh, I hope it's because if it's it, that, that could be amazing. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 371 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Dan and Jordan for helping us out this week. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash God awful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the scathing atheist citation needed DD minus and the skeptic Grant available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Jurassic Marlowe. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bostic, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard or earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Nostradamus would go on to distance himself from the happy science cult, saying, quote, those guys are fucking nuts. <laughs> the first, second, fourth, and fifth dimensions were happy to be left out of this one.
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.